Welcome to the program, everyone. This is Baptiste de Pap, and today our guest is Dr. Stephen Greer. And Dr. Stephen Greer is one of the world's foremost authorities on the subject of UFOs, extraterrestrial intelligence, and technologies, and initiating peaceful contact with interstellar civilizations. He is the producer of the documentaries Serious, Unacknowledged, and in his latest documentary, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, Dr. Greer presents the most dangerous information that the architects of secrecy don't want you to know. How forgotten spiritual knowledge holds the key to, you, to humans initiating contact with advanced ET civilizations. Um, Dr. Greer has put a briefing on ETs together for every president since Bill Clinton. Dr. Greer, welcome to the program. Thank you. Glad to be here. Very excited. Good to see you. Um, I, uh, I, I really loved your uh, film, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. And I want to start with the opening of the film. Uh, in the opening of the film, a voice says, we are living through the most extraordinary moment in human history. After decades of denial and ridicule, government officials and the mainstream media are admitting that extraterrestrials, uh, extraterrestrial civilizations are visiting Earth. But there is a twist. The same people and institutions that lied about ETs and just about everything else are now framing the extraterrestrial presence as a threat. That's how the movie, how, how your film opens. Um, and I have so many questions just about that, that opening. Uh, and my first question is, um, since when have we had contact with ETs? You know, that, that's the first question that came up. Well, I think there's very strong evidence that interstellar civilizations have had some kind of contact with humans since before recorded history. I mean, clearly, if you know the Vedas, uh, there are even parts of the Bible that reference events that very much sound like that. Uh, in the ancient Vedas in India and Sanskrit, they talk about the Vimanas that were flying around that sound like UFOs today. Uh, there are, uh, in France and also in, in, in India, there are uh, cave drawings that show very much objects that look like a UFO with uh, uh, humanoid-type creatures, but not humans, um, going, they've been carbon dated back to 5,000 years ago. So I think that it's nothing, it's not something new, except there is a building up of uh, contact because once we began to detonate atomic weapons and nuclear weapons, these civilizations that I think have been observing the planet for a very long time, knew that we were in trouble, very big trouble. And so a large scale uh, reconnaissance operation began, but also a large scale contact effort began. The problem with it in the 40s and 50s is that when all that began in earnest, we had also developed in a collusion with the Operation Paperclip uh, Nazis that were brought into the United States, extremely advanced electronic weapons, electromagnetic systems that could knock these objects down. So everyone's heard of this uh, so-called Roswell event. There were actually several events, uh, but the one that most people uh, think about was actually the uh, detonation of an electromagnetic weapon on a new radar installation that was tracking these UFOs, these ET craft that were surveilling the only nuclear weapon storage area in the world at the time, which was at the Roswell Walker Field 509th uh, Bomber Squadron. That was the only place in the world that had atomic bombs in 1947. So there's become a big problem, and that is they're concerned that humans, oh, everyone's always so worried. Uh, I get asked this all the time by people in government uh, around the world about the intentions of the ETs. I said, well, their intentions are completely peaceful. You need to look at it the other way around. They view us as a violent and now a very dangerous civilization because we have weapons that can destroy an entire planet and we're beginning to go out into space and what the public hasn't been told is that there are classified weapons 
based on studying these sorts of advanced technologies, we can get into this later, um, that certainly the president is not told about, uh, that are a, a real existential threat to Earth, but also to other planets and to extraterrestrial civilizations. So the ETs, I call them ETs for short, have had a, a very restrained uh, response, uh, mm. but they're very concerned. They want to have a peaceful contact, but there's been nobody to do it. The governments have either been, had their heads in the sand or been in denial or have been shooting at them. There has not been, except in France once, and I'll talk about this. I did it with your, with the French government. Yep. Um, the most important event in, in UFO history actually happened in France uh, that nobody knows about yet. Well, you're going to find out with your Ministry of Defense and uh, your former President Sarkozy. Uh, but what we, what the ETs really want from humans are people who are enlightened, who can make contact with them. They're not interested in a, a shooting war, but unfortunately the military in the United States and other places have, who have dealt with this, it's a little bit like Daniel Sheehan said, if, 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 if you have a hammer, the whole world looks like a nail. So you just wanna hit it. So the people who have been tasked improperly with, responding to this are people who have uh, the, 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 the colored glasses of war instead of the, the, the con consciousness of peace. And it's gotten us into a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. So what this documentary is really about, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, and you can see it all through Europe on Vimeo and iTunes and whatever, is that it's about people becoming responsible as ambassadors from Earth that are peaceful and enlightened making contact with these civilizations. But yes, I mean, this is a very big story that goes as a complex story. And I think it goes back thousands of years and maybe to the origins of the human race, frankly. But I think it's become a very critical issue. And now the government is doing a slow release. If you look at CNN or the New York Times and also European media, there have been these stories of our jet fighters chasing these objects off the coast of California. And what you, what I know about that is that the release of that information from the Pentagon was done by counterintelligence people so that they could attach a narrative yes. that these are a threat to the national security. So now you have people like the Senate uh, Intelligence Committee chairman in the United States, Marco Rubio and others saying, uh, because they have been given false information yes. that this is a threat to the national security. And of course, we had predicted this 30 years ago when I first started this project, that the, one of the objectives is to keep it secret until they are ready to uh, lift the veil. Mm -hmm. But when they do that, they will hoax a threat that isn't real. As yeah. Werner von Braun, who invented the rocket for Adolf Hitler, and then became one of the senior aerospace engineers in America, stated uh, before his death to, our, to a member of my team, uh, they want to hoax an alien threat. And that's how they can grow their military power, unite the world through fear. Um, and so it's the opposite of what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. We should be uniting the world through love, higher consciousness, enlightenment. We should be reaching out to these civilizations in peace, and so a close encounter of the fifth kind is when a human says, all right, I am here. We know these civilizations are around. We're going to reach out to them, but with a consciousness of enlightenment, understanding the nature of consciousness and mind and cosmic awareness, because that's the paradigm of an interstellar civilization. Yes. One of the things, I, one of the big secrets that the, you know, we try to pull the veil back on this movie is the whole, the, the amazing science of consciousness research that uh, I know you're aware of that was done at Princeton and elsewhere, yes. showing that the conscious mind is a field that isn't bound by space or time. And that in fact, consciousness and thought can interface with electronic devices like random number generators uh, that we portray in, in the documentary. 
but that when you're talking about a civilization that's hundreds of thousands yes. to millions of years more advanced than ours. Wow, that's amazing. They have technologies. It's like, a, like we have these, I call this a piece of junk, isn't it? It's just rubbish. Yes. Your phone, my, it's rubbish. It's running off of radio. So why is it rubbish? It's rubbish because it's running off of radio frequencies from 1844. This, it, is, this yeah. is 1844. 1844, wow. That's when amazing. we first had the first telegram. Yes. You know, Marconi, Marconi's Hill. I do it as a joke. I always say, go to Silicon Valley in America and say, you know, all this is garbage. It's rubbish. Yes. Because we're using sciences that are 150 years old. Wow. Now, in classified projects, and the people I work with, many I have 980 people who've been in uh, Lockheed Martin, my uncle's company, Northrop Grumman, CIA programs. They know about the technologies that are interfacing with consciousness. So interstellar civilizations are using thought connecting to a type of electromagnetic field, yes. transdimensional physics. And I discovered this when I was 18, when I had an experience, I was contacted and went on board an ET craft when I was a, a, a young man, uh, just turned 18 a few months before. And what I found from that experience is that they're very interested in humans experiencing deep consciousness and the aspect of our minds and ourselves that is universal because their whole paradigm of an interstellar civilization by going faster than the speed of light, they're going through other dimensions. Mm -hmm. And those dimensions are realms of conscious light and thought and thought realms um, where they're going out of 3D into 5D and back into 3D. Yes. And we understand the physics. I know people who've worked this out on to the level of the equations. But so what I'm saying to people is that we have the ability to understand this now. The science that's been done over the last 30, 40 years at Princeton and elsewhere demonstrate this capability. So now we need to have millions of people who are going to be, let's call them the, uh, the ambassadors from Earth yes. in peace to these civilizations and, and, and open the contact, do it with the humans initiating the contact Yes. instead of waiting for them they're waiting to be invited yes so i tell people this is our planet uh they view this as an important planet in the cosmos they've been observing us for thousands of years but now it's time for us to become an interplanetary civilization mm -hmm. and to do that we're going to have to not only learn the science behind this yes. but also the consciousness and the heart yes. and it's a matter of the consciousness and the heart and enlightenment to make this happen successfully. Otherwise, it's gonna devolve into what the CNN and the New York Times and the Pentagon want it to be. And that is everyone running around terrified that they're quote, aliens. By the way, I never used the word alien because people think it's someone from Mexico and the United States. Okay, that's, that's clear. Uh, just, just to make sure, uh, in your, your film, uh, Close Encounters <clears throat> of the Fifth Kind, you mentioned mm -hmm. that there are billions, billion years, ahead of us in terms of evolution Some, so somewhere on the order of a billion yes uh, so so just for us to to um to have a feel for this um it's it's like uh, it's not even uh, the difference between a human and a dog uh, right it's 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 a much bigger difference i i would say so why would they be even interested in communicating with us if they're so so much ahead of us that's that's almost like, well, because humans have what's called, uh, we've reached critical mass for an individual and collectively to be able to experience universal consciousness. So universal consciousness, cosmic consciousness, which is a meditative state. Um, before I was a medical doctor, I was a, a teacher of meditation. And since we've attained that ability, all humans, I mean, even a homeless person on the street is awake. And the faculty of being conscious means you can be aware of the awareness. And in a meditative state, become aware of only awareness. And so a human can actually attain 
the highest state of consciousness that any being in the universe can. So and, and we're, we're, we're not like a, a, a dog or whatever. Now, in terms of raw, I think we need to distinct, distinguish our innate spiritual capabilities, which are infinite as humans, from let's call fund of knowledge and IQ, intelligence quotient. So there was this one, and if you look at the documentary, there's a photograph of an ET at Joshua Tree that appeared that uh, he said that his name was Bijou, which uh, is interesting. I think in French, it sounds like Jewel, but, um, but he's a Bijou. And uh, we have this photo, it's in the documentary, you can see it. But he, at one point, I got the sense that he was extraordinarily intelligent. And so I, I got the sense and I asked him, is your IQ, if I get the sense that it's on the order of 450, if the human scale go, only goes to 200, that's the top of the human IQ scale. And he said, yes, it'd be about that. So, but that is a function of uh, uh, intellect and knowledge and experience and evolution of the cerebral cortex. It's not a function of the innate ability to be conscious. So a human and an ET doesn't matter if they're millions of years more developed uh, intellectually, have the same capacity at that level. What makes everything an even playing field is the plane of the heart and the mind, where the, the potential, there's infinite potential within the human consciousness, mind and heart together. Is that because there ultimately there's only one field of consciousness? That's right. It's a singularity. And as you know, uh, the very famous quantum physicist, uh, Urban Schrodinger, said, you know, the total number of minds in the universe is one. That is, it's a singularity. And we go through this in the documentary because it's the foundation of understanding how humans can not only become peaceful and united with each other, but can view ourselves within the cosmic order in a way that doesn't uh, overwhelm us. Because we have to begin to understand our own birthright as humans. We are all, every human, doesn't matter what their IQ, their profession, nothing. All humans who are awake and conscious have the ability to experience that field consciousness that's infinite and unbounded. And begin to develop these abilities such as remote viewing, um, yes. levitation, teleportation, uh, seeing to the future, the yes. past. You can, all of this is all within our abilities. And in fact, if you study human history, uh, throughout history, there have been certain people that have had those experiences. Absolutely. And uh, I think we're coming into a time where instead of it being a guru, yes or a saint, it should be everybody. Yeah, so we, we all have that potential. Yeah. Yeah, we, we all have that potential. I have one more question because I, we, we are going to talk about this. Um, yes. but I, I have one more question. In, in 2001 at the National Press Club, uh, Press Club in, in Washington, DC, um, you, you, you came out and officially said there is extraterrestrial presence. That's 19 years ago. So right. I think 19 years ago was the first time that we uh, officially said there is extraterrestrial presence, right? Is that correct? Yes, and we had uh, 22 military people on stage with me. And uh, out of 120 that I had already put on videotape who were whistleblowers, and now I have 985. Yes. And the amount of material we have is overwhelming. Now, the mainstream media doesn't want to have you know but the teeny little bit. And thank God for shows like yours because most people are only given a little tip of this, but then they wrap it in a bunch of falsehoods. Yes. So the way, the way the government is doing this is we're gonna trickle out a little bit of information, yes. but we're gonna spin it, yes. you know, like spin meisters. And it doesn't get the attention in the mainstream media that it should have. Yes, of course, well, it actually did. When we did the National Press Club event, uh, almost a billion people saw that, but, all the major media were contacted by the intelligence community and told to stop covering. I know this for a fact. Okay. So, you know, we talk about this in our documentary 
where uh, this constitutional attorney who's been on my team for 20 years, uh, Daniel Sheehan, who did the Pentagon Papers and others, and he said, look, he saw a document that described that there were, back in the 70s, uh, 42 people who were the senior editors at major media around the world who were on the payroll of the CIA, uh, even though that was completely illegal, including the American media. So I think people have this wrong idea that we actually have a free press, uh, and we do not. Uh, it's more clear than ever now, uh, right? In this time of censorship, uh, the yeah. technology platforms are censoring everything. That's everything. Not, uh, not aligned with the mainstream narrative. Uh, right. So it's very clear that there is no freedom of press. No, and, and there hasn't been. You know, I, I tell this hilarious story back in 1990, uh, I believe it was in 94, I was in New York City and there was a man named Bob Schwartz who was on the board of Time Life. Uh, of course, Time Magazine. It became AOL, Time Warner, and parent company of CNN. And he was this elderly man. He said, he said, look, Dr. Greer, we're all in the media. We're scribes taking dictation from the right hand of the king. He said, the fourth estate, the free press has been dead for decades. And he described to me how it all worked. And this was one of the most senior journalist media people in the world. And I was sitting with him at a salon in um, New York. And, and, and I, I wasn't surprised to hear this, but the details he gave me about the level of control and corruption. Unfortunately, now that we have the new media, the internet, they're doing the same thing on, on the platforms. Like uh, even on some of my uh, sites, we had a, a, a whistleblower come forward about how the CIA and what the technologies they had were that were they were abducting people. You know, everyone thinks abductions are done by ETs. I said, no, they're being done by the intelligence community uh, where people are scared and are taken. And, and the guy was involved in the development of the radio frequency chip that they were using for people uh, that was made to look very alien. And that video went up within a week. It had almost a million views. And then in one day, it went from 675,000 views down to 6,000 views. Yes. They just chopped the numbers off to take it out of the search algorithm. So what you see happening is shadow banning, it's called. Yes. On the so what you see is that the mainstream media, when they start to cover this, and this is why we have to be very awake to this, the mainstream media will put this in a narrative of it being a national security threat or a world threat. Yes. And it's a complete hoax, total hoax. Yes. I liken it to uh, Colin Powell going up to the United Nations with, with vials of weapons of mass destruction that Iraq had. And everyone knew, except him, that this was a hoax, mm. that, they, that Saddam Hussein did not have these weapons. Mm. Of course, it got us into a terrible war where we're still, it's a mess, and it was totally hoaxed. What they're planning to do, if you take that example, what they are already doing, not planning to do, but what they are doing is to release this information in a way that creates the fear of something other, the otherness. Now, the only way we can transcend that and go beyond that narrative is A, to know the truth, but B, to experience the state of consciousness that's universal so that when you look into the eyes of an ET, you see that they're awake and you realize you're awake and I'm awake. What well, turns out that conscious field is a singularity. So there's no reason to be afraid. There's no reason to be divided. Yeah. And, 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 and if you look at Hollywood and all the programming that's been going on, I yeah. mean, there's so oh, yeah. many Hollywood films of alien invasions, war of the worlds. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and and, and so, so there is a programming that they are scary. And, and that, that's another question that I have because, you know, I did research for this interview and a lot of people said, you know, um, how do we know that they all they are all friendly? Because there are stories about the greys and about the reptilians uh, mm -hmm. that are even and there. There is a lot of people. Some people say that the reptilians are controlling this earth and that they are mm -hmm. oh, controlling yes, the elites. Yeah. Um, is is there no truth to that? Is is there no 
alien presence here that is controlling the, the elite powers in this world? No, they're not. However, there are other dimensions where people, well, here's what's happened. And we, we probably don't have time for this. But anything that's strange that happens is now called alien. Yes. It's not useful. For example, as an emergency doctor, I had a man who was uh, shot and killed. We tried to save him, but he was too far gone. And uh, many hours later in the room where he died, the, everything was quiet at three in the morning. Suddenly, the uh, room, all the machines turned on, the cu cupboards opened and things started flying out of the cupboards. And it was his astral body, his spirit, that was still there, angry. And he actually had an effect in the three-dimensional world. So there are other dimensions that aren't extraterrestrial. In other words, they're not from another star system and planet. But there are other dimensions where there could be things that are very strange. Or dark. Like you're, like you're referring to. They are dark and negative. Like, sure. like, like possession, like in poltergeist, is that possible? Yes, absolutely it's possible. Yeah. So, that's, so what's happening is that people have what I call cosmological indigestion. They're com combining other dimensional beings with extraterrestrial beings with other types of phenomenon and calling it all one thing. Okay. It's not useful. So it, in fact, it, it actually causes enormous confusion. So what I would say is that there is not any evidence that the extraterrestrial biological entities that are from other star systems and planets are at all hostile. And in fact, they're very concerned about our hostility. What they're really concerned about is the fact that we have atomic weapons and hydrogen bombs and weapons of mass destruction and electronic weapons that we have been putting into space on our satellites and that we could be a threat to not only all life on earth which i think is considered very precious uh, in the universe but could be a threat to other star systems yes but at so the same time that's a different i think that the 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 ufo subculture uh has combined that with another problem and that is, if you look at the documentary, you'll see there's an Air Force intelligence officer who broke down and came clean on the fact that in the intelligence community here, as well as around the world, they have hoaxed alien abductions with creatures that are man-made and with UFOs that are man-made. So it gets to be very complicated. You're dealing with the biggest secret in the history of the human race. We can prove through documents that this is by far the most secret subject in the United States government. To keep it secret, they create decoys. They create a sort of a, a distraction and a decoy where it takes people off what the truth is. And, and counterintelligence is what this is called. Yeah. The counterintelligence is very sophisticated and they have in their collection technologies to be able to hoax an alien they can hoax an ET craft. They can hoax an abduction experience. They can, there are all kinds of things. So unfortunately what's happened is that you have man-made hoax phenomenon called abductions being confused with actual ET contact, being confused with people who are experiencing beings from other dimensions that can affect this dimension, but they're not extraterrestrial. Okay. And all of that has been called one thing. Yeah. And what I'm trying to very quickly here do, it's a complicated story uh, in, in science. But what I'm trying to do is say that we have to, and I mentioned this issue before we started, a good physician has what's called differential diagnoses. So if you have chest pain, it could be a heart attack, but it could be pleurisy yes. or a pulmonary embolus or a ruptured aorta like Princess Di had. So you have to understand, you can't call a whole lot of different things one thing. It's not useful. But that is unfortunately what has happened. And I believe this has been done deliberately because they want people to have someone new to hate. Okay. They really want the alien 
phenomenon, to be the next thing that people focus their tribalistic hatred on. Okay, so, so a part of what I want to do is take away the fear um, of yep. aliens. So very clear, there, there are no grays. They don't exist, the grays, because everyone is afraid of the grays. Well, there could be some uh, ETs that look similar to the grays. Yes, but they're but not they're, evil. Oh, no, but there are other programs that have used those creatures, because we know what they look like, to create robotics okay. and then abduct people. Yes. I'm telling so you, this is a complicated story. I, I, I believe you. I believe you. But, but we are here to, to share the truth. So there are also no... Now most people don't want to hear the truth because they're like religious nuts. They've already had their minds made Abs up. Absolutely. And there are so, no evil yeah. reptilians. Re evil no, reptilians. I, mean, there, I mean, are there... See, again, I find those terms very racist. Um, because yeah, I get are there it. beings that could have some features of a reptile species or a cetacean, like a dolphin. We've had, my group has had contact with all of them. We have found none of them to be harmful, evil, whatever. Now, the reason people want to attach to that is because the narrative is, there's always got to be cowboys and Indians. We've always got to have someone to fight. Yep. And the only way you keep the war machine going is to put out enough disinformation and falsehood to scare the population and get them to go along with it. I mean, with all due respect, let, you don't have to go back in ancient times for this. Look at uh, Europe with Adolf Hitler and Jews and gay people. They were caricatured so that, and, and the, you know, the blood libels and all of that, so that they could get the support of the people to hate them. Because Adolf Hitler couldn't do the Holocaust by himself. No. He had to have people who were brainwashed. So now what we have, we have people getting brainwashed to get on a war footing against the aliens. So the global organization known as uh, MAGIC, the Majority Intelligence Committee, um, and I have a document about all this, it's global, it's not just US. They want people to have a new enemy because we're kind of running out of enemies that we can, you know, like terrorism, well, there's a few thousand people. They really, to grow their industry yes. and to grow the profits of the military industrial complex, they want people to live in fear rather than love. They want people to be recoiled, closed down rather than open and enlightenment. And to do that, they need to scare the hell out of people, just like Adolf Hitler scared the hell out of people yes. in Europe. So that's what they're doing. It's a very simple narrative to understand. Once you, but you have to understand one other thing that's very hard for people to imagine. And this is going to blow your mind. Anything you can imagine, they have already done, humans have already done technologically at the Lockheed Skunk Works and other uh, top uh, engineering technology places that are classified. Uh, and I mean up to and including simulating things from other dimensions. There's a show called Stranger Things. That whole show is based on things we did at Montauk um, that were, you know, weird things from other dimensions uh, that humans were actually doing. Yeah, but it's also based on the work of Steven Spielberg. It's a real ET setting, it's the 80s. Um, it is, it is, the show was very popular also because it, it was, a, lo a lot of people loved the 80s. The 80s was great with E.T. and the Goonies and it has that atmosphere, but it's also really dark because there's Alien, the movie Alien uh, in it. Um, so I, I, I think you're right. Is that also part of the programming that they're trying sure. to? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at, uh, there's a, a movie that came out years ago called Independence Day. Yeah, with, with Will Smith, Smith. Yeah, yeah. And that was actually a script from CIA uh, influence to tell people, here's how we can unite the world. It's like Ronald Reagan in front of the UN saying, if we had an alien threat, we can unite the world. So, so this is, this is in the documentary, by the way, we portray yeah. this in Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. So it's a very huge problem of propaganda brainwashing, uh, and deliberately hoaxed events. I mean, you have to understand, I have personally met with many, many special forces people who don't want to be known publicly, who have done the abductions, 
they have they have actually controlled these robotic things that look like grays or reptiles on board man-made UFOs that are anti-gravity using electronic devices and chemicals that can knock somebody out and give them an abduction experience. So people go, is that happening? I said, yes, all over, everywhere. So you have hoaxed contact. What we're saying is that we need to understand this, but not bring it into our minds to where we think it's real because it's really all very much staged. Yes. It's called stagecraft. Yes. And then we need to say, what's the solution to that? Yes. So I have gone out for 30 years with thousands of people, made contact with various civilizations of all types. Yes. No one's ever been abducted. No one's ever been harmed. No one's ever been injured. It's been beautiful experiences with amazing, highly intelligent, highly enlightened uh, beings. And so I tell people they live too much on the internet and movies, taking in rubbish and, and, and a myth and uh, hoaxed information. It's more useful if you're going to be scientific. Well, the, the basis of real science is empiricism, obser observation. So why not form a team of people, a few people, go out under this at night, use these we have these protocols and by the way i want to say if people want to say what are you doing there's a, a training program on an app CE5. called the ce5 contact app the ce5 contact that you get it on your iphone or, or uh, google android will actually train you to remote do the remote viewing the meditation what we call coherent thought sequencing where we actually expand our awareness and invite the ets to come and in one way or another, they receive that. They come. They may not be in 3D. They may be in 5D. They may only appear through the electronics on your uh, magnetometers or your uh, radar detectors. There are a lot of different ways they can appear. But we have never gone out as an expedition in 30 years and not had contact. And if you look at the documentary, you're going to see all kinds of phenomena. Yep. That has happened with ETs, actual ETs that have happened. Now, I will say we have also been hoaxed where we have had the military send in a fake UFO or a fake object. So, you know, unfortunately, being the head of the team globally, we now have 100,000 people around the world doing this, but we want to have 80 million people doing it. So I appreciate your getting the message out because. Absolutely. In a moment, we can talk about the power of collective consciousness. When minds and hearts link up, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. It can have a huge effect for the world by doing this for peace. Mm. You, you, you say in your film that uh, the ET civilizations are waiting for us to make contact. Um, and the way to do that is to evolve our consciousness and to become right. more heart-centered. Right. Um, they can feel our uh, pure intention. Yes. Uh, they want us to live in unity consciousness because only from that consciousness we can really connect with them mm -hmm. uh, because then we experience we're all, you know, at, at the ultimate level, we're all the same. At the we're same time, yeah, we're, we're, all one. Yeah, we're all one. At the same time, you call communicating with ETs, you call it cosmic disobedience or, or on a grand scale. Mm -hmm. um, right. Why? Because this is the one thing that the, the government and the military and the intelligence community cannot control. If millions of people do this, it has an effect that changes the minds and hearts of people who don't even know you're doing it. This is the non-locality, the entanglement effect of consciousness on remote places that they've studied in the science of consciousness. And so it also would overwhelm, it's like a denial of service attack by a hacker on a, on a computer server. If you have millions of people doing this, they don't have the assets to stop it everywhere. Now, for me personally, yes, obviously, there's a lot of reconnaissance around what I do personally. However, but I'm also putting together the briefings for the you know, Senate Intelligence Committee as a, as a citizen to tell them what the truth is. So obviously, I'm in a different situation, but most people, would not be able to be interfered with by the government because there aren't enough assets. 
so we can overwhelm that. So it's an act of, it, it's sort of like I grew up in the South in the United States and I had a, a you know, in 1971, 72, I had a African-American girlfriend in North Carolina. You can imagine how dangerous um, I was almost killed, run over by a car because of this. Um, and, but what, what, I, what, you, what you saw then is that Martin Luther King said, you, we had to do civil disobedience. Now that didn't mean violence. It was, it was nonviolent civil disobedience yes. where they would just, you know, sit at lunch counters or get on buses and, you know, well, we have to do a similar thing to overwhelm what the global uh, fascist war machine is doing and say, all right, you're doing what you're doing, but there are 8 billion of us. And all, we only need 1% of the world's population to shift the entire other 99%. This is this 1% consciousness effect. But as we do this, it would overwhelm their uh, reconnaissance systems and it would overwhelm their ability to suppress it if enough of us just went out and very simply did the remote viewing, the meditation, the contact, they can't, they can't suppress everybody. Mm. And so this is an act of cosmic civil disobedience where we're basically saying to the super state, uh, this fascist global super state that wants to control everything, we're saying, no, you're not gonna control us. We're gonna, and by the way, I will point out in 1992, after we had the event happen in Florida, where there were four ET craft that appeared in the sky and you, in the video, it's not a very good video, but you hear this boy from the South going, holy damn hot shit, and like that is hilarious. That was on the front page of the Pensacola paper the next day in Florida. And that got noted by the intelligence community. And I got approached within days. And the head of inter uh, army intelligence uh, threatened me. And he said, what the hell are you doing? I said, well, we're citizens of earth and we're universal because we have universal consciousness. Everyone is, has awareness. The spark of consciousness within every human is in its deep location, in its true nature, universal everywhere. So we're going to go out and make contact with these civilizations, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, and you, he was furious, but you know I'm not one to shy away from uh, someone who's a thug. Uh, and uh, he, he, you know he was a typical master of the universe. He was the head of army intelligence for the United States. Yes. And I said, well, this is what we're going to do, and you can't stop us. So, so excuse and, me, and, um, please. Uh, well, and so people need to have this attitude that we are going to peacefully rebel against this tyranny of not only the military trying to create conflict with these civilizations, but also the brainwashing they're doing to the public. Yes. The best way for people to know what this is, isn't to read a book or to Google something, is to go out there and find out for yourself. So Don't take my word for it. Go do it yourself. But and now we have an app where people can learn to do it very simply. We're hearing from people from all over the world. I mean, we had a Croatian truck driver who had gotten the app and he stopped late at night up in the mountains and he was doing the meditation and the remote viewing and then the, he, inviting these ET civilizations to visit. And a few moments later, a ship materialized to the left of his cab of his truck and floated right over the truck and then dematerialized vanished on the other side he wrote to us and said he was astonished and this was an ordinary bloke who was a lorry driver truck driver in croatia so i tell people everyone can do this and everyone needs to begin to do it it's a beautiful experience by the way and, and wonderful yeah, Dr. Gree, what I don't understand, uh, the, <clears throat> it's all about control. Uh, the spin meisters of the national security and the intelligence community, community they don't want us to evolve our consciousness and to uh, communicate with the ETs. Right. What are they afraid of? That we will overthrow uh, the elites that are in power if we all become heart-centered and work together with the ETs? What, what is the fear that they have? Their fear is loss of control and loss of, a loss of control of the future. 
So if you control the past and the history, which they are rewritten, then you control the now. But if you can control the now, you're also controlling the future. And so they're very concerned about, remember, these are people who are addicted to enormous amounts of power, but covertly. And so these covert power centers want the human race to follow a narrative that they are writing. They want us to follow it. Uh, and what we have to say is, no, we're not going to be fooled again. You know, it, it, it did fool everyone with 9-11 and the Iraq war. And of course, Saddam Hussein had nothing to do with 9-11. But there we go. Yes. They did it. They hoaxed it. It's the same thing with the Vietnam War. They hoaxed the Gulf of Tonkin incident, which expanded the, the cause of President Johnson to expand the Vietnam War. Now they're in the process. And we warned everyone of this. And now you're seeing it on your news television. They're hoaxing this alien threat. Uh, we have to sit, be smarter than that. We need at least 1% of the population. Uh, I don't know if you're in Belgium or France, 1% of Belgium would only, it would be a very small number of people, wouldn't it? It'd be 10,000 people. If you had 10 million people in Belgium, I think about. So a little bit more. But... A little bit more. But I mean, it's like one of our medium sized states in America. Yeah. It's completely doable to transform your society with 1% because of what they used to call the Maharishi effect, the effect that consciousness, yeah. when 1% of people become coherent, meditating, it shifts everyone else. Yes. Well, uh, Dr. Greer, at, at, uh, you say that they are afraid of losing their power. At the same time, you say in your film, real power is derived from consciousness. Um, for instance, remote viewing is extremely efficient spycraft. You talk about the power of mass uh, consciousness and we could change the direction of the planet if we all um, shift our consciousness. Um, right. And um, again, so, so there is a power that they have, but it is not yes. the power that is derived from consciousness. It is a different kind of power. Yeah, well, the, it's temporal, brutal power yeah. is the intelligence community and the military and, and these covert. Yeah, um, I don't know it, if, if you know it, the word. It's, it's a tiny, it's like a gnat flying into the sun compared to the power of enlightenment and consciousness. Yes. But people have to do the work to extricate themselves from these false narratives and do things that lead to their own enlightenment, but the enlightenment of others. And that is something that completely overwhelms their system. Because no matter how much we, you know, it's the old adage, no matter how dark things are, if you, if you light one candle, there's no more darkness. Yes. Do you know the work of, of Gary Zukav? He yes. wrote The Dancing Woolly Masters and then The Seed of the Soul. Mm -hmm. In The Seed of the Soul, he talks about external power. External power is power over. It's, 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 right. it's, it's, it's based on fear. But you also have authentic power. Authentic power is when the personality starts to serve uh, the, the energy of the soul. And right. I, I think uh, the, the, what the, the, the uh, elites have or the, the spin mice or the national security or the intelligence community, they have external power. Correct. But we, once we start to open our hearts and once we start to meditate and once we start to raise our consciousness, we start to create authentic power. Yes. Uh, really. And that, that's really what you're talking about here. And once we have authentic power, we can co-create with the ETs. And we can, co we can shift the situation on our planet. Yes, and that's what they're waiting for. Yes. By the way, this is something we have to do the hard work for. You know, everyone from Larry King to the CI director, <laughs> why don't they just land on the White House lawn? Yes. I go, because they're, they're wise. And they know that humans have to be ready and also welcome them but also have developed consciousness on their own to understand the reality of a civilization that's from other star systems that have traversed the science of consciousness. You know, our material sciences, you know, we think Silicon Valley and computers, this is all at the speed of light, my friend, what you yes. and I are doing right now. Yes. We're, all these civilizations that are interstellar have mastered the science of consciousness 
and transdimensional physics that are linked to consciousness and thought. Yes. It's like the ancient cities of the Vedas where people could levitate and teleport, but that is their normal science. That's like you and me turning on our cell phone. So we have to not only experience this universality of consciousness, yes. Yes. we have to understand it has very practical applications. Absolutely. Such yes. as gaining information through remote viewing. Yes. which uh, now, of course, the CIA people have admitted they have done this. Yes. But we can do it for a, an enlightened purpose, not just to spy on another country. We can do it to create peace on this earth, yes. peace in space, uh, and a relationship with these cosmic neighbors that we yes. have. Yes. So let's talk about the evolution of consciousness on this planet, because uh, it, it takes time or it takes events. Uh, yes. And please hear me out. Um, I was uh, interviewing uh, Stephen Todeshi. He's the executive director of ARE. That's the Associa mm -hmm. Association for Research and Enlightenment, the Edgar Cayce Institute in, in Virginia Beach. Yes, so, very near me. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we all know that uh, Edgar Cayce was probably the, the, he was at least the most documented psychic ever. He, he, was, he was accurate. They called him the sleeping prophet. Anyway, I asked uh, St uh, Kevin Todeshi, why was he so good? Why was he such a powerful psychic? And he said, Edgar Cayce had built this over many lifetimes through reincarnation. So he, he, was, he, uh, he was not a walk-in. On the other hand, we have people um, like uh, Ingo Swan, who is the father of remote viewing together with Hope. Oh, yes, he and I were friends. Yes, yeah, I knew. And, and Russell Tark. But he, um, according to, to Uri Geller, um, Ingo had an encounter with ETs Yes. And that helped him to speed up his, uh, his, his, his consciousness and his spiritual powers and his psychic powers. Uh, oh, yeah. So um, is there not a way where the, the, the ETs can actually uh, help us by, by sending in so, you know, certain energy towards our planet so that it's easier for us to open our hearts and to raise our consciousness? Well, absolutely. And they do that. When I take teams out under the stars, uh, not only what I am teaching people, but what the ETs are doing, with us, but you have to ask. Yes. So, so what, what specific In other questions? Words, you, you have to be open to it first. Yes. And you have to ask, otherwise it would be invasive. Yes. And the reason I know that the things that are portrayed as alien abductions are being done by these, uh, where power is coming from brute force and, and, yes. and not from enlightenment and not from ETs, is that uh, that is very invasive. Whereas if you want to have that relationship with an extraterrestrial civilization or being, that is something you do voluntarily, but you have to make that known. You have to take an overt act. Yes. And that's what we call a close encounter of the fifth kind, a human initiating and asking for the contact. And as that happens, they will learn from us and we will learn from them. But with the experiences you have and I know this may be sounding a little bit far out there. I don't know what your listenership's knowledge of this might be, but even the actual ET spacecraft are conscious. They have a level of consciousness that is a mirror of the commander or the occupant so that the, the spacecraft itself is so developed that it is infused. They are bio nano machines. So they're not just a piece of metal. They are actually conscious and they're living and they actually transmit and receive consciousness and thought from the, from the ET spacecraft, the UFO. Right. And that's how you know the difference between an actual ET UFO versus a man-made UFO from Lockheed Skunk Works, from the classified military program. So, you know, this gets into a whole discussion of, of what are we really dealing with here? when we're dealing with civilizations that are hundreds of thousands to millions of years more developed than we are. Well, we're dealing with the civilizations, all of them, that have a level of scientific development that is a corollary to the level of consciousness. Yes. So let's say if, if, the, if the whole civilization we're dealing with is in God consciousness, cosmic consciousness, yes. their technologies are emerging from that level of knowledge. Yes. yes. And even their communication systems are all passing through this switchboard of cosmic consciousness, this field of consciousness. 
but it is understood at a very profound level and it's also begun to be interfaced with technology. So this is, this is where, uh, you know, I, unfortunately our civilization should have known all of this about 1955, 1960. Ironically, when I was born in 1955, I just turned 65. And so what you find is there are civilizations that are really concerned that Earth and its inhabitants are, in a sense, been held back. And to change that, we're going to each have to reach out to these civilizations. And as they do so, you're right, the experiences people have on our CE5 teams um, are so beautiful in consciousness and the development of their uh, psychic abilities, their heart, their level of meditation and consciousness when they're doing it with each other as humans, but also with the ETs. Yes. Because what we actually do, we actually invite the ETs to come and meditate with us yes. and communicate with us. So, so we need to be very clear about this. So the, 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 um, the, the, the ETs, they want us to evolve. They want us to raise our consciousness. They want to, us to connect with our higher self. They want us to experience unity. Uh, unity. At the same time, we have the in intelligence community and the mainstream media that is, uh, doesn't want us to do that. They don't want us to tap into our authentic power. Um, and that force seems to be much bigger right now on the planet. I mean, you are there. Um, you don't have a platform. You, you, you don't own CNN. Um, right. so, so how are we accomplish this uh, mm -hmm. when we have all these counter forces from the intelligence community? I mean, it's, it's really uh, hard. It's about people coming together. This is the miracle of the, what I keep referring to, the 1% effect. So let me get into that a little. Let's unpack that a little bit. In the yes. documentary, we... we talk about field coherence in quantum physics. And basically what that is, uh, we use the example of superfluidity in helium. But if you were to take a container of helium and cool it down to absolute zero, as you get approach that point, you get molecules of helium that align, that become lined up together, coherent. When 1% of those molecules reach coherence, not 99%, not 51%, it's not like an election, 1%, instantly, almost in a magical way, the entire container of helium, like that in a, in a nanosecond, all becomes coherent. The other 99% of the molecules. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So what I tell people, we need to be able to focus on becoming that 1% coherence with each other, in teams of people, with our neighbors. And if we become, all of us, 1%, uh, it's the other 1%. It's not the 1% of the super rich and elite. It's the 1% of all of us, but becoming enlightened and coherent in consciousness, but also doing something together for the planet, moving in one direction. That then shifts the other 99%. And that's how society evolves. So the amount of power that people think of, I believe it's a paper tiger. We call it a paper tiger. Uh, is the power of the intelligence community and, and the governments yes. that are doing covert, nasty things. Yes. They can get away with it because people choose to remain ignorant and yes. choose to remain unenlightened. But at the, at the very instant that we can get 1% of the population of my country, your country, the world, aligned and aware and doing this, that will then spontaneously recruit and change the other 99%. The intelligence community knows what I'm talking about. They deeply understand the science of consciousness. And that's why they always, whenever we make a step forward, you know, they put something to create fear. So the National Press Club event was in May of 2001. Four months later, 9-11 happened. Yeah, but but who, are these, who are these people? I mean, you, you've, you've got people like um, Hal Podov and Russell Tart, and, 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 and they seem to be really good people. They are not part of the intelligence community, or are they? They seem well, to they be are. I mean, they, they have been for most of their career. But yeah. Russell Targ, at least, uh, has come, become very honest about what he was doing. 
and is educating people about how to do remote viewing and meditation. And he makes the same point I do. Yep. You can take anyone off the street and in a very short amount of time, they can be remote viewing and getting as accurate information as Ingo Swan. It, it's absolute people view this. This is where I'm very opposed to these gurus. I don't like it when someone considers me a guru or something. No, everyone has the same capability to do it very quickly, but yes. we've been brainwashed to think we cannot. Yes, so it's like, you know, I, 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 as, a, as a doctor doing surgical procedures, if I tell myself I can't put this chest tube in or put this person on a, on a breathing ventilator, I won't because I will, I will screw it up. Yes. We have to tell ourselves we are all children of the light. We are all consciousness. The consciousness within us is infinite. We can experience whatever you've heard Ingo Swan do, you can do, I can do, everyone can do. And I actually, you know, I was in Ingo Swan's apartment in New York um, and he and I were, you know, had a very clear uh, relationship about all of these things and understanding. And he said, yes, people just don't believe they can, so they can't. There's yeah, really nothing special about me or him or Russell Targ yeah. or any of them. But at the same time, everyone agrees that Ingo had a brilliant mind. He was evolved. Um... Oh, yeah, he had a brilliant mind so he could articulate. But in terms of the experience, I have taken thousands of people out and trained them in meditation and remote viewing. And some of the best ones I have are blue collar people. I, I think of this police, of this fireman and his wife, a policewoman in New York City, had never meditated, never. And they immediately were getting the most accurate information. I, I tell people that there's, we really need to, to, to stop idolatry, you know, or, or, or putting people up on some pedestal. Uh, because I, I actually think that while people have become very accomplished and we should honor them for their accomplishments, uh, in reality, we, we shouldn't do it to a point where we diminish everyone's capacity. I'm actually quite egalitarian in believing that uh, uh, humans just have to exert their attention in a direction and then that that whatever they put their attention on will blossom i, I agree work. with you but at the same time i mean mozart had a gift for music he could play the piano uh, oh yes when he was five uh, we can say, yes. yeah we yeah we can say that ingo swan was also a prodigy in in remote viewing he's the father of remote viewing and it's it's okay some people are just better at a certain skill mm -hmm. and remote viewing is a protocol that anyone can learn it's not hard it's, it's a few steps and everyone can yeah. learn it i agree well, with and there that. are a million ways to do it remember yeah. before yeah. before the cia started doing remote viewing per se there were ancient seers yes if you go to the the text of the ancient uh, uh read yogananda's book paramahansa yogananda yes. it, it, it was not unusual Yes. In fact, you were considered if you were adept in meditation and, and, and the practice of consciousness in meditative states, it was normal to be able yes. to do this. In, yes. in Australia, yes. you had aboriginals. This is part of their culture that they would have dream time. Yes. So they in a dream state, they would see the following day or the future yes. or learn things. Uh, this is innate to human nature. My point is, is that this is innate to human nature. And yes, there are certain people who, for whatever reason, shine in that area very young or very quickly. And that's okay. And that's okay. But what I'm saying is that everyone can do it. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm trying to make this something so that everyone realizes, um, you know, because I think a lot of people have this negative narrative in their head about themselves. Yeah. They don't, be we, we have to believe in ourselves. Yes. We have to, to know that it is our God-given birthright to be conscious and we have a spirit and a soul that is infinite. And all we have to do is begin to experience it so that these extraterrestrial civilizations also view us that way. They don't view us as just a, a lump of clay. They see humanity as having this enormous potential, but also we have an enormous threat. But the, the potential comes from the higher self, not the, the, the higher self. Yes. Yeah, not the personality. Is that not also what the Buddha and Jesus were trying to show us? Oh, totally. Yes, one hundred percent. Because all they, enlightened teachers. Yes. Yes, they said what what I I did, you can do it too. Yes. Um, so let's talk a little bit of, uh, more about consciousness because it's all about consciousness. Consciousness transcends the limits of space and uh, space and time, and that's also how the technology of the ETs works. 
So what is the best way to understand non-locality? Um, there, there's this Emoto, uh, Masuro Emoto, I've interviewed him, uh, he has passed unfortunately, but um, Masuro Emoto, uh, he did exper experiments with putting intent on the water. And I think uh, yes. in a way, this is a beautiful way uh, to, um, to, to, to show what, what uh, non-locality is. Yes, and it shows that you can do it from far away also. In other words, they've done experiments with, say, uh, white blood cells from your saliva, fly it thousands of miles away, and have people have monitor the uh, electromagnetic potential across the cell membrane. And the person, when they experience a strong emotion or a thought or whatever, it will register in the white blood cell that's thousands of miles away. So what you find is that in, in physics, it's called entanglement or entangled, where everything is actually connected non-locally, meaning in a non-linear way. But the ultimate field of entanglement is consciousness, because the conscious field is actually omnipresent and infinite and isn't limited by time or space. And since it's not limited by time, it's why it's been called eternal. But because it's not limited by space, it's been called infinite. So this field, this aspects of ourselves, that is the root of our being conscious. So the other, and the other thing to remember is that we're not talking about some far away thing. It's so close to us, we don't see it. It's like this close. So think about it. You're conscious right now, and I'm conscious. We have our individualities and our egos, but the faculty of consciousness, that whereby we are awake, that field of consciousness is one. So there's really one conscious mind shining through trillions of beings. Now, those beings, if they're not enlightened, trap it in their egos. Enlightenment is the process of seeing that the drop of your own individuality is actually part and parcel of the ocean. And you become part of the ocean. And you become the observer. Yes, okay. And so that state of, of oneness that develops through the integration of an individuality, understanding the true nature of consciousness is a very key aspect of our development spiritually and in enlightenment. But it also it begins to explain how you can go from one point in space to another point in space without going in a straight line. Yes. Now, why is this important? At the speed of light and matter, to go from the Andromeda galaxy, where this ET bijou that we have the photo from Joshua Tree came from, that's two and a half million years at the speed of light. Now, even if you could get a machine to go at the speed of light, it would take two and a half million years to get here. And then another two and a half million years to go back. You can't do five million years for a round trip ticket. Therefore, we know that these civilizations have technologies that are very high voltage, electromagnetic, that actually cause the entire object, let's like say this is a spacecraft, where it would resonantly shift at a linear space time into increasingly non-local, fields of energy so that it can go from point A to B, it basically is going from here to here this way. You know, it, it's not going a straight line. It's instantly going in a resonance effect like this. So it's virtually, now communication, their technologies, ET technologies have a very advanced version of what Elon Musk is working on with Neuralink, where he wants you to be able to think to your computer and it turns on. He wants to have this by 2025. Of course, I was laughing. I said the intelligence community had that in 1955. Um, but um, they did. We do. Um, but these interstellar civilizations are very advanced in having those technologies where they innately can remote view, but they have what I call technology-assisted consciousness, where they have a technological system that's assisting their consciousness. They have another thing that's the reverse, where their own consciousness is assisting a machine or a technology. Mm. So there's 
I call it TAC and CAT, Technology Assisted Consciousness and Consciousness Assisted Technology. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an interwoven paradigm where even the material sciences begin to be integrated with this concept of entanglement and the conscious universe. Yes. And that's where you have your big quantum leaps in development and also travel through space and time. Yes. In, in, in the movie, um, someone asked a question. I know someone says, we now have the technology to take ET home. And then yes. another guy asked the question, how does it work? And the answer is, all points in space and time are connected. Correct. Uh, so, so the answer is ESP. Mm -hmm. Well, that's right? what uh, that's what the, the the head of the Lockheed Skunk Works was yes. saying. Yes. Yes. So, so, uh, so, so no. UFOs are are transdimensional, and it means that they're not traveling at the speed of light. They're not working at the speed of light. They're, it's it's at Much the speed better. of thought. The speed yes. of thought, right? Correct. Or close. Uh, to, yeah. Close. Close to it. So that means that what, what you just mentioned, Elon Musk, what he's doing with SpaceX is, quote unquote, a joke compared to the technology that is working on the speed of thought. Well, yes, of course. I mean, he's doing th contracting for the U.S. government and he's not a, he, he would not be allowed to bring out. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he's heard of these things, but he would not be allowed to bring out a technology that would be on CNN that would be going to the moon and back in, in you know, two or three seconds. But um, you, you agree that Elon Musk is very intelligent, right? Yes, but I think it's, you know, there, you can't confuse intelligence with courage. Yes. At the same time, he also said, and, and this is important for our uh, conversation, uh, he said it a few times in interviews. He said, you know, I did all the research. There, there are no ETs. There is no extraterrestrial life. He said it on, 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 on recording. What, well, what do you think about no. it? He's intelligent in the sphere that he's intelligent. Yeah. He's very wrong on that. I don't think he actually believes that. Did he never think, contacted you? Because he seems to be interested in what's, what's happening out there. No, no, I have not actually spoken to him. I know people who, who have worked with him. And my understanding, he understands a great deal more than he should say. Because okay. if you're getting, look, if you're getting billions and billions of dollars from the U.S. government and NASA, to build the, the, this, this old fashioned rocket, which is from the 1940s with uh, Werner von Braun invented it for Adolf Hitler. Um, if you're using a rocket in 2020, this just means that you either don't know about these technologies or you're, you're protecting yourself and your company by not stepping on the toes of these uh, giant uh, interests that don't want this out because, you know, it, it's, it's, Look, the implications of this all coming out are so profound. No aspect of life would be unaffected. Hmm. Let's, no let's, I mean, we're not just spirituality and consciousness, but, you know, we wouldn't need oil or gas or coal or nuclear power or surface roads or public utilities. You know, you're talking more than a thousand trillion dollars in global assets would be absolutely worth nothing once the truth about this comes out. And by the way, that's one of the reasons for the secrecy is people are trying to hold on to that kind of power that's based in the system. The system we have, unfortunately, my first great love was Gaia, the earth. Yes. We're killing the earth. Uh, I actually just found spirit and, and consciousness through earth. Absolutely. Because uh, I just have this love affair with the earth as a young boy in the South. And um, I was raised an atheist. We didn't believe anything existed. But what I discovered was the earth is a conscious living being, but we're, we're killing her unnecessarily. But if we were to bring out this information, you're also going to bring out with it the technology. And my friend, when that happens, you know, it's like the REM song. It's the end of the world as we know it, but I feel fine. Everything you see around you, and everything you're using will be replaced okay. with something that is pulling energy uh, out of the zero point energy field, as it's called. Uh, we won't have surface roads because we'll be levitating above the ground. Um, highways will be a thing of the past. Public utilities uh, will be a thing of the past. Poverty and pollution will be a thing of the past. Now, these extraterrestrial civilizations know this, and they were hoping in the 1950s we would have fixed this problem, but we didn't. 
a cabal of sociopaths and, and warmongers and money-grubbing industrialists seized power in a undisclosed coup d'etat and betrayed President Eisenhower. And we have been in the crapper ever since. I mean, we, we have just gone downhill ever since. So the problem is, you know, we all think we're very high tech because of our digital gadgets. We're not. Your cell phone and this call is being transmitted at the speed of light, powered by utilities that are using gas and coal and nuclear power. A little bit of green, but most of it isn't. So we're basically the same as we were in the 1800s, except that they've allowed out the integrated circuits from studying the ET materials, by the way. Uh, but, but the basic way our world is being run is just like it was in the late 1800s. So I call this the lost century. And actually my next big project is gonna be a feature film about the lost century. What happened to these technologies? What do we do to bring it out? Because we have to save the planet. But it's because of our leadership. It's very clear. I mean, if we had other leaders. Um... Forget the leaders, my friend. We have to be, you and I, the, the, man, the, the man on the street. I'm a very Jeffersonian, we the people. So we, why, why, why don't you run for president then? Or is it oh all? I, mean, I would be the worst politician and the worst. Well, Donald, and, Donald Trump was not a politician and he did it. I mean, I, uh, no. look, first of all, there's more power in educating the public on this than there is at 1600 Pennsylvania uh, Avenue. Uh, people don't understand power. Real power comes from the level of consciousness you have and the effect that can have across societies. Um, it's yeah, but but okay, I, I agree with that. But why has not a Jesus-like or a Buddha-like uh, person already? Why 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 hasn't that person taken over the earth yet? Why why is Jesus not okay, in charge? Because because this is a, the, the 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 other part of Earth is that uh, it's a sphere of free will. So we have each human has to choose. We have been making the wrong choices. Let me put it that way. But and it takes it takes awareness to choose. That's right. So we I have think I think awareness. our awareness is the problem. Yes, that's why that's why I left my medical career to do the disclosure project and these projects. But uh, most people are complacent and apathetic, and we've been trained to be that way. Uh, so I think we have to we have to step into our own power. And if I'm very skeptical, quite frankly, of central powerful governments doing the right thing. And you think about this. When was there a revolution on earth, peaceful or otherwise, that came from the centers of power? Never. It always comes from left field. It always comes from way out there, somewhere on the fringes. So I think we have to view this as a process that is evolutionary revolutionary, not violent. And we have to see that we have to create the forces with each other to do this and get to that 1% effect to transform the planet. I think we're very mistaken uh, if we sit back and expect the next president of my country or your country or the European Union or China to do this. I think it's really up to the people. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I, I wanna go to, to your CE5 uh, teams. Um, David, Mar David Marconi, is in, in your teams. Um, he says, we are being suppressed to change life for the better. And he talks about the Dreyfus character in uh, Close Encounters of the Third yes. Kind, the Steven Spielberg film. That's yes. actually the one Steven Spielberg film that we all really like. I think the film is aligned yes. with what you're doing. The, mm -hmm. the, 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 the Dreyfus character has visions and he also has, I think, telepathic communication yes. with yes. Uh, the ETs. And uh, the ETs are friendly in, uh, in, in, in close encounters of the third kind. So um, I think it's really important, and it's, it's, it's being said in, in, in the film, Close Encounters of the, the uh, Fifth Kind, um, we, we need uh, the, the ETs, they are interested in us having a pure heart, a clear intent, and join them in universal peace. So what is really important, if we want to reach out to them and if we want to connect with them, we have to do that from a pure intention because I, I, I could say, oh, it's so hard now, right now in Europe because of COVID-19 and I want the ETs to, to take me in their ship and, and fly away. Um, that's not a pure intention because it's coming right. from fear. So right. it needs to come from my heart. It needs to come 
uh, from love, right? Because they're not going to respond to my um, request if it's not coming from, from a pure intention that's coming from the heart. Correct. And, and from a larger purpose. So even, you know, if you look at this movie, Close Encounter of the Fifth Kind, you'll see there was a, an elderly man who had lost his hearing when he was young, uh, middle school, high school. And it was a very severe hearing loss. And there was an ET that we have a photo of that's sort of a manta ray, um, uh, not a, uh, a praying mantis shaped head, like a triangular head. And we've seen these ETs before at our expeditions, which I want to do again, but because of COVID, I can't. You should come. You would like it. Um, Absolutely, yeah. And Absolutely. We, we had this man, This so we're in our circle, and David Marconi, who, by the way, wrote the script for Enemy of the State, the mm. movie Enemy of the State with Will Smith. He's a very accomplished screenwriter, but he's on our team. And we heard the way this happens is a wonderful story. I, we're sitting in a circle. And I was between David Marconi and this man who had his hearing healed by the ET. And I heard, we, we were doing the deep meditation and the CE5 protocols that are in the app, CE5 contact app. And suddenly I heard these footsteps behind us, but everyone was in their chairs. So we looked around, but the being had dematerialized. And then suddenly, between uh, a, man, a, a young man who was a medical student beside me and this man who had lost his hearing, we saw a ruby red, beautiful, sort of teardrop gem, like a jewel that materialized right there. I mean, two feet, three feet from me. And David Marconi's camera was open and he, the, he took a picture and in that picture, that that little teardrop shaped gem became an ET. Well, this ET connected to this man, not just then, but throughout the night. And he was doing this work in consciousness and he didn't even care about his hearing. He didn't think of it. But towards the end of the night, because he had sincerely made contact with this civilization, this leader of this civilization, he said, and by the way, I can't hear a lot. Could you do something about my hearing? The next morning, he woke up his hearing completely normal. Now, he didn't go to this, this training I was doing to get his hearing fixed. He did it for a pure, for, with a pure intention. But because he was there for the right reason, the ET healed him. I, I, I still feel that um, what, we need, what, what you say that we need to do it ourselves, but I still feel that in our time we need we have lack of leadership. We need a Nelson Mandela or a Gandhi um, to 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 show us the way. Uh, because right now there is no real leadership anymore. So yes, you and I we will have to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, so you're looking at it. Yes. So that's us. We're so that's, that's us. We have to do it. Um, you also say and because I I think that you know they the ETs they can intervene and they have intervened right if we we, we play with our nuclear missiles uh, but you also have said in your film they show remarkable restraint not to have pushed back yes. so they can if they want they can intervene but they oh, don't do it only if it's um, if it's if we are really endangering our planet then they will intervene with only if there is an extinction level event yes so I, then, I wanna... then you're going to see a massive intervention but let's hope we don't get to that um, uh, I know from contact I've had that they're hopeful that we can get our act together and fix these things. But if we were to collapse the biosphere yes. or to engage in full out nuclear, there would be a massive intervention. Or if the biosphere were to start to collapse with a lot of massive so-called earth changes, you would see a massive amount of ET intervention to stabilize things. Because the future, here's the thing, we're at the end of one yuga, one long era, as it's called in the Vedas, uh, of 400 and some thousand years. We're opening a 500,000 year cycle of enlightenment that's not just on earth, it's universal. So we're at this, in, in the crossing of the dying of the old and the emerging of the new, so it's chaotic. 
So I think one of the things, that one of the big tasks for us humans at this point is to stay focused on the, the, the new world that's being birthed, that we're creating, and not get overwhelmed by the old one that's collapsing. So are, because are you, let's face it, the world around us as we know it is collapsing. Um, and you, if you get too overwhelmed by that, you can't be a light worker in consciousness and heart to create the future. So you have to be aware of it, but you have to be proportional. You need wisdom to navigate these very rough waters. Uh, but the interstellar civilizations know this. They're watching, and what's beautiful and very touching, if you look at all the accounts of people in this movie, uh, the Close Encounters of Fifth Kind movie, people all over the world who are doing this, and I'm not with them often. Um, I'm sort of a recluse now, a lot. But they're doing this and having these amazing things happen, which is beautiful, and I'm not there. They're doing it on their own. The ETs, so these extraterrestrial civilizations are very much wanting to interface and do this with us. But it takes two to tango, as we say. It Absolutely. takes two to dance. So we have to be a willing partner. And so far, the governments haven't been willing. They've been hostile. So who's left? It's you and me. It's the people. So I, this is why I began to move all of this to the public in, in, in a large way, because we need to have millions of people who understand that they can be points of contact and, and ambassadors to these civilizations, but they have to free their minds of all the fear first. Yes. Because let's face it, if someone thinks I'm going to go out there and do this and I'm going to be uh, abducted and raped by an alien, uh, no one's going to do it. But that, that fear and that false disinformation has been pushed into the public through the media, movies, books, ufology, the internet, all kinds of stuff for the purpose of stopping people doing a conscious contact. Because fear closes down the heart, fear closes down the mind, Absolutely. and fear also keeps you from fulfilling your potential. It takes your power away. And th these, these people, the people who control these powerful institutions on the planet understand the power of fear. Look at what has happened with coronavirus. It, they have exploited it in a way to maximize fear and have done completely anti-scientific things about it. As a doctor, I look at this and I'm going, could you be more 180 degree opposite from a scientific point of view? But there's this fear. So the fear is actually gonna end up being more deadly than the virus, it turns out. The UN is now saying 250 million people are gonna die because of our shutting everything down for the virus Whereas maybe only two people will die from two million people die from the virus. We're going to kill a hundred million more people through fear and starvation and disruption. So what's going on is very uh, very concerning to me because it seems to be they're practicing by controlling society through fear with this virus what they want to do in the future near future with the aliens, with the threat from aliens. Yeah, talking about that, Ver Werner von Braun, it's in, in, in your film, Unacknowledged. Um, he predicted there would be a fake alien invasion. Is that on the agenda? Is that going yes. to happen? Yes, and I know people who worked in the command center where they can push a button and they, there were thing happens all over the world that would look like an alien invasion. So then we will have Independence Day to film, but then in- yeah. It would look just, it, yes, it, but yeah. it would all be man-made, 100% okay. man-made. Okay, um, another uh, worry that I really have is 5G. A lot of people say that it's a military weapon uh, for mind control, is that true? I have no, no I, to be honest with you, I only, when I speak of something, I speak authoritatively, okay. because they absolutely know. Okay. Everything I'm telling you, as crazy as some of it sounds, I know nothing about that. And so I have no opinion about it. I honestly don't have any, I see what's on the internet, but that is mostly, I don't trust the internet. I don't have any inside sources yes. that are giving me intelligence on that. When I talk about these other things, I have people that are direct, senior, inside, and I have hundreds of them. So in my, I sort of have my own intelligence directorate in a sense, it's private uh, and, and an analyst and strategic an, an analysis. 
But on this, this 5G question, I have no information from a source that I know and trust. Yes, so I, I don't know. I honestly, you probably know much more about it than I do. Okay, but if it, it just if they have mind control over us through 5G, then it's game over. That's just um, something I, I worry about. Um, well, they don't need 5G for that, by the way. I mean, if you look at psychotronics, radionics that were developed in the 50s and 60s, there are or the systems like that have ex existed for 60 years um, where they can affect people's behaviors and thoughts and what have you. Um, and that's oh, they're not, already doing it. That's, I mean, I, I yeah, I, they are. And that's what I'm saying. They've had that kind of technology for a very, very long time. Yeah, but it could, and be. by the way, that was the one thing Werner von Braun talked about that was more dangerous than the alien threat was the fact that they had these sort of very high tech electromagnetic uh, systems that affect mind, consciousness, thought. Yes, because that's that's what you know. That's why I think the aliens can help us to come in and, and destroy all those things that are causing that mind control. That would, I mean, that would be really helpful. I mean, well, if, if I would, you know, contact them, I would ask them, okay, please destroy all the <laughs> things that are controlling our minds. And they uh, would tell you to go destroy them. <laughs> it's so good. Um, okay, so if people want I know to, what they would say, what would they say? What I just told you. You go and fix this. Yeah. You, you're, you're the people of the earth. You made this mess. You fix it. Uh, see, this is, I call this cosmic codependency, um, where we think that some force from outside our planet is going to come and fix things for us rather than us doing the hard work to fix it ourselves. And the reason that doesn't work, it's like when we went into Afghanistan, which was warlords and why we thought we were going to impose Jeffersonian democracy in Afghanistan, in a feudal society. Well, how stupid is that? That has to come from the people there, not some big powerful interest coming in from outside. On a similar analogy, if these civilizations were to try to fix and impose things from outside, it wouldn't work, it wouldn't stick because we would not have learned the fundamental lessons that we must learn as individuals and as a society. So this is, I call it schoolhouse earth and it's the school of hard knocks sometimes, yeah. but we have to do this. And this is, there's no wiggling off. The worm isn't wiggling off the hook here because this is a very key thing that people get into. They either want to view these visitors as either our saviors or as devils or as, you know, they're our enemies or they're going to be our salvation. And in reality, the reality is they're here to help and understand but only commensurate to us acting. Yeah. So, so we have to out act. If it's done in any other way, it wouldn't stick. It's like if you've ever raised children. I have four children. I'm expecting my 10th grandchild on Halloween. And you think, if I had never let them fall and stumble or stand up and fall and hit their head, oh, you know, when they fall over, they would have never learned to walk. They'd still be, you know, paralyzed. So in a similar way, these very advanced civilizations know that we as a people are emerging as a level one civilization. We're trying to become an advanced civilization. If they were to do it externally, it would be a crutch and we would never get off that crutch. So they're here to help and understand, but in secondarily, they're really here expecting us in collaborating with them to lead that process. And that way it'll become a permanent change and not a, a temporary. Mm. Yes, um, quick question. Have you seen the film Plandemic? Oh yes, I know the people who ma made it and who- Mickey uh, Willis. My, yeah. One of my uh, folks who um, helped fund Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind also helped fund that project. Uh, do you agree with uh, the content of the film? Well, I will say that it's, I will confirm that it is a bioengineered weapon. Yes. So uh, the the, vi that. the virus is real, but it's man-made. It's man. Yes. It's very real, and it has a horrible effect on a certain demographic: elderly and people with who are very sick. Um, it's a nasty thing. But it was uh, now the people I know from Fort Detrick and the biowarfare systems, DNA geneticists, PhDs have all told me, looking at the genome. It's clearly been bioengineered and biowarfare weapon. 
What we don't know is whether it was deliberately released or accidentally. Um, they won't commit to that. All they're doing, they're scientists who are only looking at the genome and the splicing, the CRISPR, what appeared to be CRISPR technology to put in certain sequences that would make it very, very, very contagious, um, which it is. It's, it's two or three times as contagious as, say, the flu. Um, but interestingly, if you're under age 70 and in good health, it's less fatal than the flu. It's only in the older demographic and also people who have, you know, you know, chemotherapy or very bad heart disease, then of course it's a different story. But for younger people, one of the sad things I see is there are so many young people who are totally paralyzed with fear and the likelihood of them dying from this virus is much less than the flu season, which very few of them get vaccines for anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's so much of this as I call the fear factor. Mm -hmm that has caused a great deal of damage. And in the United States, you know, our overdose deaths have now gone up by 50%. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a real tragedy happening. Um, and one of my concerns is that we have a biowarfare weapon that's been released, but I don't think, I think it's really a weapon of economic mass destruction and a weapon of, I hate to say this, but social engineering to see to what extent they can control the public. Yeah. Uh, but isn't, isn't the agenda, um, the WHO and Bill Gates, isn't the agenda uh, uh, population management, but it's really population reduction, and then that we will go to a civilization like China where we totally controlled. Is that not the agenda? And then also, of course, digital my money. Concern, I, well, I, the former, we know that that's part of what, you know, they'd like to see some kind of catastrophe happen where we lose a lot of people. But I think my big concern is that they want us to become a sort of a centralized command economy that's mercantile, materialistic, but where people have no freedoms. Uh, because you, if you look, I don't know about your country, but in the United States, um, they're doing very draconian things. We have curfew here. Well, we have things here that are unbelievable. In my state of Virginia, yeah. they are, if, if you are in a public place without a mask, even though the mask people are wearing isn't stopping, the virus is too small yeah. to be stopped by a cloth. They're putting people in prison for one year or a $2,500 fine. So they're instituting state uh, really fascist policies that under the guise of protecting the public. Now, there are some public health things that are legitimate, but the concern is, is where they begin to overreach and go too far and where they begin to uh, do things like you would expect in a totalitarian regime like in China or, or some of these other countries. And I think that that's a very worrisome uh, development. Ultimately, think about the effect having an a, a alien threat invasion hoax. The whole world could be united yes. in this sort of fear where but everything would be controlled due to this response to the threat. So what I'm a little concerned about, the overreach that's been done with coronavirus, I'm afraid is a beta testing of what they're planning to do with this that's going on at the same time, the Pentagon releasing footage, but also telling people it's a national security threat. Yes. I think that, they're, that those, these are not an unrelated uh, accidents. And by the way, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind was scheduled to come out originally in December, it got delayed to April. And that's exactly when they released coronavirus. Mm. The National Press Club event we did for Disclosure Project was eight, May 9, 2001. On September 11th, September 11th happened. Mm. And when Unacknowledged got up on Netflix and went viral, it's now on Amazon Prime in English-speaking countries, but not in your country yet. In a few weeks, it'll be on Prime in your country. But when we released Unacknowledged, by the time it went viral and eventually 600 million people saw Unacknowledged on black sites, on Netflix, everywhere, that caused them to form this TTSA group with Elizondo and these people releasing this Pentagon footage, but telling the public the aliens are a threat, the aliens are hostile, it's a national security threat. These are not coincidences. So as we, you, you, we, I know this is going to happen. As we move forward. Can you give a time frame? 
Oh, who knows? I mean, I, I, I think within the next two years, it's not going to take five years, I think. Yeah, well, you know, here's the problem with time. It's a rubber band. And you can stretch it out or pull it back. So yep. uh, I, I, it, time is actually an illusion. It's more the event horizon. Mm-hmm. And everything we do and say, and you reaching however many people you can reach, me doing what I'm doing, the, it changes the timeline. Mm-hmm. So look at time as a, sort of a, it's a rubber band of events and it can be stretched out or contracted. Or you can have what I call a time snap. Everything comes together very quickly. Now, if we could get enough people doing meditation and consciousness and in a pure hearted way, working together, hmm. I think we would see a time snap where there would be, we would catapult over that chasm and enter into a time of a very peaceful, enlightened civilization. But this is all dependent on heart to heart, person to person waking up to the challenges of this time and not getting pulled into the fear of coronavirus or fear of aliens or fe- they're always trying to stop people's enlightenment by overwhelming them with fear. Hmm. And that's the trick. You have to be aware of what they're doing, but don't give it any more power than it should have. So, so what will you do when the fake alien invasion happens? What are you going to do? Post on social media, it's fake, it's fake, it's fake. I mean, what are you going to do then? Well, we've already been warning people it is. I'm doing things on the inside, as you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have responsibilities in Washington to provide correct perspective to decision makers, both in the military and in the, the Congress and the White House. So, yeah, but obviously when it happens, your government is part of it, right? I mean, Well, no. The, our government would react to it. They may not know who's doing it. For example, um, there, if you understand unacknowledged, There's an unacknowledged level of programs that don't even tell the president what they're doing. So the government... Yeah, but they're still, they're still part of the government, although nobody knows that they exist. Oh, I would say that they're equally part of Goldman Sachs and Chase Manhattan Bank and uh, Lockheed Skunk Works and Northrop Grumman and uh, Raytheon. Uh, frankly, I think the corporate financial world has much more power than anyone I know in the United States government. Okay, but what, what do you call them? Are you, do you call them the deep state or, or do you have a name? No, I call them? it the, the, the unacknowledged special access projects. Okay. But they're a hybrid of both private and public sector. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're transnational, not just US. Wow. So people have this wrong understanding. <laughs> They think the world is organized the way your high school civics lesson. Well, you can throw that book away because that isn't the way the world runs. It is and hasn't been since the 50s. So the world runs in a very different way when you're dealing with very powerful issues like this. Uh, I know the people who are on those committees, a number of them, uh, and what their agenda is. And uh, part of it, it, most of it is centered around growing centralized global control. It's all about control. And one of the ways that they control the population the most effectively is through fear, whether it's terrorism or coronavirus or aliens, that is a huge mechanism for fear. And demagogues, I mean, if you go back to ancient times or World War II, it's the fear and creating a boogeyman, an enemy that controls the masses. The the unfortunate thing about many people in the so-called new age and ufo community is that they've been drinking the kool-aid of the fear factor on ufos for decades with with very well curated false scenarios that have been done by the intelligence community such as abductions and mutilations and all of that and of course people think as an article of faith those are alien i said yeah out of an underground base near fort sill oklahoma um Uh, you know, look, I know the guys who've been on those programs who've done the abductions personally. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that the public has been so gullible is is a measure, just like we were so gullible after 9-11 with the Patriot Act, but also going into Iraq when Saddam Hussein had nothing to do with 9-11. So they just... But no, no, nobody's held accountable for anything. I mean, right? Well, of course not. I mean, this is, you know, this is the other problem until the people hold everyone accountable. But you know, the court system isn't, you know, nobody has prosecuted anyone from going into Iraq under false pretenses. Uh, never mind, millions of people are dead and trillions of dollars wasted. 
So, you know, the reality is that you're not going to get justice at that level because the system is, um, I hate to say, rather corrupt. Um, you're going to get, you're going to get just, justice by creating a new world and letting all that rubbish, you know. Well, they say that power corrupts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. And you're talking about the folks that the, the folks that level is, is a lot of power. Oh, my God. So I'm not talking about billions. You're talking about hundreds of trillions of dollars. Yeah, but I and, mean, uh, money, money is not I mean, if, if we don't have the earth anymore, if we can't live in harmony and peace with the earth and, and, mm -hmm. and with our ecosystem. What, what, what is money then? I mean, right. I mean, it's yeah, well, you, th these people are, they may be cunning, but they're not exactly visionaries, right? No. It's, it's like when George Bush Sr. said, uh, you know, I, I don't do the vision thing. You know, he was an apparatchik, a functionary. So some of these people I've met with is like, the ideas that you and I are discussing would just be, you might as well be speaking Swahili. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been with a lot of the folks who are on the committee, the Majority Intelligence Committee. And. Uh, some of them get this. Uh, there are people who support what we're trying to achieve. Um, that's why I'm not dead yet. Uh, but there are others who are very opposed and, and you know, nasty about it. Um, but, but do you have protection? Uh, yes. yes. But, but not like there's no, no bodyguards in your home. I'll just say there's adequate Okay, there's adequate protection. Yeah, I don't. I mean, no yeah, well, we don't want you to. You know, we need you here. I think, especially in the in the in the years to come. So, um, so. Uh, well, it's, it's your turn. I'm 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 getting old. So I. I'm doing my part, but you know, you I, are. I, I I I'm sometimes fearful too, and I'm like, this is a, this is this is a lot. I mean, it's so much. There's so much. The other problem is there's so much division, even within you know conscious aware communities. There's division on. Oh, just don't pay attention to the division. I always tell people, let's find the things that we can agree on. Yes. I always, even the people who are addicted to the evil alien narrative. Yeah. They go, yes. Okay, so let's think this through. Stay with me for a moment. Let's say those are true and not the not all hoax and some of them are rather nasty about it they have technologies that are interstellar capable you're not going to resolve the problem down the barrel of a laser or a gun because their technologies are a million years ahead of ours therefore what would be the way to develop a rapprochement it isn't going to be through the military it isn't going to be through warfare it isn't going to be through fear and hate it's going to be through close encounters of the fifth kind, making contact with them, developing a, a, a rapprochement, a dialogue, an understanding. And I will remind people that we bombed the hell out of Germany and Japan and dropped the bombs at, you know, 75 years ago in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And now Germany and Japan are our closest friends and allies. So we have to take a bigger view than to fall into this sort of false dialectic, uh, this sort of narrative of endless enemies. So I always tell people, look, you can't prove a negative. I can't prove that there are no unfriendly civilizations out there. But if there are, what I'm recommending that we do is still the path of wisdom. Yeah. Because the other path would be the destruction of the entire planet Earth. Yeah, and that's an eye for an eye and we always lose. Yeah, well, not only that, but you're not dealing with swords or a knife now. You're yeah, dealing yeah. with a scalar you know, and, and longitudinal yeah. electromagnetic weapons that could turn the Earth into a pink mist in space in a nanosecond. So these civilizations, if they were hostile, the way people portray, it would have all been over in 1945 when we started detonating atomic weapons, which, by the way, give out an electromagnetic pulse that goes even further further into other dimensions that disrupts them. So that's why the whole atomic and nuclear weapon issue is so concerning to the ETs. It's not just what you read about in the physics books. There's an aspect of that electromagnetic pulse that goes beyond into these what's called trans-dimensional physics. Mm. And that is very, very disruptive. Mm. So if they were really hostile to us, uh, it would have been point, set, match, everything over. But I just tell people, if you are addicted, let's say you're addicted to the brainwashing and you love to have, you know, most people love to have someone to hate. 
we have to hate the Dracos and the reptilians and the gray, you, you know, it's cowboys and Indians. And my wife was in the in Peace Corps, but before that in Vista, she was on a, an Indian reservation. And if, if there were very few black people, but the white people looked down on everyone. The black people looked down on the Native Americans. The Native Americans looked down on the, so, and the one tribe looked down on the other tribe. So humans, tribalistic that we are, are addicted to the paradigm of division, tribalism, hatred, warfare, all of it. So we've got to transcend that. Because I tell people, what's the color of consciousness? It doesn't have a color. Yeah. What's the ethnicity of universal consciousness? It's universal. So we have to get to that level of understanding or we're going to destroy ourselves, either amongst ourselves or with another planetary system. But those civilizations understand what I'm saying. Hmm. They understand that the, that, that the primary challenge at this time on earth is the development of a spiritual awareness, higher states of consciousness, this place of the heart that's clear, that goes beyond fear. And that's our challenge. And I think that's what we need to be singularly focused on. And if there are, I mean, look, I've been all over the world for 30 years, thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of hours under the stars, vectoring and inviting these ETs in. I've never had a bad experience, but all these people who claim these horrible creatures are out there, I would say, please introduce them to my team. I mean that. I'm not afraid of them. Introduce them to my team and we'll have a rapprochement and we'll resolve the problems and go forward. You're not going to resolve it by going around using racist epithets, the grades, the reptilian. I mean, this is like saying the N word or the K word or the F word. So it's, yeah, it's but in, in this time. I mean, you know of David Icke, right? I mean, in this time, uh, I really don't. But um, but what know, I'm saying is that you, you know of him. You have must mm -hmm. have heard of, of him. Um, I mean, I've heard he, the name. That's all. Yeah, I don't yeah, know anything yeah, so, so he's basically uh, a lot of what he's saying is actually true. But then he says the world is being controlled. Uh, let's say the, the the British royals and the Rockefellers and uh, the Bill Gates and Harry, uh, you know, Kissinger and all those people in power, they are controlled by reptilians. Uh, and, and well, I think they're just controlled aliens. by their own ignorant greed. But yep. um, but <laughs> if there are those, all I'm saying is that, look, I've, I've moved in a lot of these circles. Yep. Um, if, there are, if there are beings like that, I think some of these things that they're referring to are not extraterrestrials, but they're really creepy things from another dimension. Yes. And we haven't talked much about that, but that's a separate thing. I, I mentioned early on, everyone's confusing other things with ETs because we live in the space age. If it goes bump in the night, oh, it's got to be an alien. Well, it isn't all of an alien. But, 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 but what is it? Is it then dark forces, evil spirits? I mean, sure. Uh... Of course, those exist. Yes. God is an emergency doctor. I've seen all kinds of evil things. Yes, uh, yes. But you, you say it like, oh, sure, they do exist. Now, a lot of people don't talk about it. Everyone is talking about the COVID-19 or the, the, the ETs, but not about uh, evil spirits. Yeah, but why focus? I mean, there's plenty of good spirit. Why focus on the dark? No, but there's See, dark energy at, at work on no, the planet. What, what, what is the... What is the what, <laughs> you, this is where wisdom has to come to play a little bit. What... Stirring around the darkness doesn't change it to light. You never attack the darkness. You always amplify the light. Yeah, exactly. So you bring in light and the darkness goes away on its own. But if there is, all I was making as an argument is that if there are civilizations that are problematic, that need, uh, that, that may not have our best interest in mind, I think it's more of a misunderstanding, frankly, um, like many things are then we should have an a, a ambassador outreach to them more than we do to uh, the ones that are friendly. Why? Because you need a better diplomatic mission to Russia or China than you do to Great Britain. That, that, In other words, you need to be a diplomacy and resolving conflict. If we're about resolving conflict, you don't just run around calling people names. You try to resolve the issues. Okay, so but they, they are actually saying there's no such thing as pure evil, you know, right? Because you don't want to go into diplomacy with pure evil. 
Yeah, but I don't think I just don't think that's what we're talking about here. I think if you're talking about interstellar civilizations, extraterrestrial biological entities, I think we're talking about something very different than what a lot of people are calling aliens. And I think they're I call it cosmological indigestion. People have just consumed all this stuff. They haven't sorted it out. And I think you have to have enough experience and knowledge to sort it out. And if you look at very, very ancient texts, there are ancient texts that refer to uh, beings that aren't corporeal, that aren't uh, physical extraterrestrials, that are rather troublesome. So um, just as there could be angelic beings. So I think that we, what's happened is that this has all gotten, gotten confused or called the same thing because it's a pop culture alien. But I'm just saying that there's a lack of discernment. There's a lack of clarity. And so I think we have to have an honest discussion about that. But when you boil it all down, if there's a civilization that is hostile, then we should be reaching out to them immediately with the Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind Initiative. Because if you're not a dilettante, if you're a sincere about peace and enlightenment and resolving conflicts, you want to reach out to where the problem is more than you want to reach out to the ones who are already, you know, it's in the echo chamber of, the, they call it preaching to the choir. Yes. You want to be able to have a, a, so I would say that even if someone is addicted to hate and to this paradigm of, what do you call them, reptilians and dracos and grays, if you're addicted to that and you love that because you get some excitement about being filled with hate, which most humans do, um, then that's fine. Then I would say, all right, let's then set up a meeting between humans and these beings and see what kind of dialogue and resolution we can reach because we're not going to fix the problem through an Star Wars. We're not going to fix the problem through an interplanetary war. That's for sure. So that's um, the path of wisdom, whether you believe it or not. Yeah. So, so the conclusion is uh, the, the ETs are not going to save us. Uh, so all those many people are praying for it right now. It's not going to happen. But we can make uh, uh, contact with them if it's happening from a pure heart with a pure intent. And we can save ourselves with them. Yes. This is we, the key point. That's the key point. If, yeah. if we can do it with them, we, we can bring forward a new civilization and save our civilization and the earth by working openly, cooperatively with them. But are you but, saying that we can't do it without them? Um, we probably could, but it'd be difficult at this point because that the we've gone too far into the space age. Okay. And at this point, let's just say the Earth is a a, a planet of deep concern because we haven't talked about this on the show but the technologies that we have, that we have deployed against the ETs, it's not a, Steve, a George Lucas movie. It's extraordinarily uh, dangerous, faster than the speed of light weapon systems. That we have. That we have, humans have. Yeah, but, so, but, but you told them that they are so much more advanced than us, so it's not going to be a, a challenge for them. Well, it's, it's maybe not a challenge, but if you, if you get into a shooting war, it's not gonna be nice. Um, and they're not going to let, for example, an innocent planet out in space be targeted. Uh, now I'm touching on some things that are great national security concern they don't like me to talk about. But, you know, if we, if we, I always tell people that we are viewed as the existential threat to other worlds, not the other way around. So, of course, we're such a narcissistic, self-absorbed culture that we never look at things through the eyes of others. But if we pause for a moment, look at this world through the eyes of other civilizations and advanced civilizations, we're a mess. And we are a threat not only to ourselves, but to others. Now, in, in, in a, as an emergency doctor, if somebody is so crazy, they're a threat to themselves or others, they're, cu they're put into a, you know, a mental hospital. Um, but I think that we're sort of under a cosmic quarantine because we are viewed as, as really having gone off the rails over the last 60 or 70 years. I think we can fix that, but we need some people from all walks of life working to fix it. So it's gonna be very difficult to go forward um, and, and, and have the, the planet we wanna have without factoring in 
th this other aspect, the fact that we're not alone. And I think over the next few hundred years, the Earth will be integrated with all these other planets peacefully. I think that's what's coming. But we're just in the phase of trying to make this transition to a level one civilization that's peaceful and isn't destroying the biosphere. So we have to navigate this transition carefully, which I think is why a lot of people like you and me are on the planet right now. Somehow we're supposed to help. Yeah, we absolutely are. So if people want to learn more about your CE5 teams, um, yes. where can they go? Well, the, the app is CE5 Contact. It's the name of the app. And it actually has a way, kind of like a dating app, where you can see who's in your city or your town who are doing it. And you can then network and hook up with them. And where can so, they download the app? On the App Store. On, on app store. Or, or a Google Play. Um, so it's just on all those stores. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I would encourage people to see the documentaries. Um, yeah. uh, unfortunately, uh, Unacknowledged has just gone off of Netflix. Yes. But it's in a few weeks, it'll be on Amazon Prime, all through Europe, Latin America. It's on but Amazon. Would you, would, you, would you recommend that they see Unacknowledged first before they see Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind? Either way. You can okay. see them in the, either way. But in your country, you're not going to be able to unless you rent unacknowledged because it's not on Netflix and Amazon takes a little longer to get the languages embedded yeah. for like France and Belgium and Germany, you know, but um, the close encounters of the fifth kind is really important for people to see because it kind of takes you on a trip over a two hour period of, you know, the, what the problem is, what they're doing, what the solution is with the science of consciousness but also what's the phenomenon? What kind of experiences have we had? Yeah, it, it, now, it's, it's, it's almost like magic, all the experiences to us. Uh, oh, you also so mentioned beautiful. that in the film. It's yeah, magical it because they're so uh, way ahead of us. Is that why it's so magical? Yeah. Yes, I mean, because we live in a 3D consciousness, but we're dealing with civilizations operating from 3D up to 10D, you know, technologically. But, but, you know, it makes sense. If you were to go back to a Thomas Jefferson's house, which is down the road from here, where I am now in Virginia, uh, and show Thomas Jefferson a iPhone, he would think it was from the, uh, another dimension. He would think it was magic. And in fact, you might be burned at the stake as a witch for having it because of the video. And so think about, that's just 200 years. Now imagine civilizations hundreds of thousands to millions of years, how they would appear, what their technologies might be like. It's, it's a extraordinary. And so that's why one of the things I, I enjoy doing is training people on what kind of phenomenon comes with the, e, the real ET experience, as opposed to the fake one that the intelligence community is doing. The fake one's easy to understand. But the real ET experience is something between the end of the movie contact, that's like a dream state, um, and uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. You, you mean contact with Jodie Foster and Matthew McConaughey, right? Yeah. That, that contact, okay. Yeah. yeah, the very end of it. Yeah. The very end of it, which was very dreamlike. Yes. Very astral, uh, like the astral worlds of light. So you're dealing with civilizations that traverse those dimensions and understand it, but their technologies are emerging from that level. Hmm. So even, you know, even, you know, when they have a physical spacecraft, that spacecraft isn't being made by digging things up out of the ground and melting it and putting rivets. If you look at them, they have no seams. They have no parts. It's all of one because they're materializing it with a resonant field template from the near astral into 3D. So we understand the manufacturing of ET objects. It's fascinating. And when you actually see them, and you know, I have some of these things, hmm. you realize that you're not dealing with Ford Motor Company cobbling together an engine hmm. out of junk they dug up from the earth and melted down in iron. Um, it's a very different science. So the material sciences are different. The quality of the light is different. It's all infused with consciousness. Um, it's living. 
the, there's a, a biological living conscious component to their machinery, believe it or not. So <clears throat> it's very extraordinary. And therefore, the way they can interface with you is very extraordinary on an electromagnetic level, conscious level, physical level, uh, neurological level. Uh, electronics that we have out with us will begin to talk when they're not even engineered to do that, like a radar detector or a, a magnetometer that picks up magnetic field changes will begin to actually have the ET signal through it. I mean, we have, um, it's just so much amazing, more, more than we have time for, but it's, it's a beautiful experience. Um, and that's why I always know it's very different from what's been caricatured in the movies and in the UFO world. And it, it's, it's, it's almost achingly beautiful to go out and have this experience. It's beautiful. And it's of the heart and the mind. Um, and it's sort of where celestial level of consciousness would come together with physical spacecraft and other worlds and other people. Mm. It's like that kind of marrying of that. Uh, and, and in a sense, that's a glimpse into our own future, the so way that we're going to be in the next few thousand years. So, Dr. Greer, would it be possible to have uh, an ET on our program? <laughs> Oh, who knows? I doubt that. But <laughs> never know. They may jump into your keyboard and send you a little indicator. I, I had my, my encounters as well, and I had incredible encounters. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, and it, I always thought, okay, tomorrow it has to be uh, in, in the media, on the news. And then it, I, I was having a barbecue, and there were two UFOs, and they move differently. They move out. You know, they're not of this world. Right. So that's how you know. Right. And all the people that were there, it was actually outside of Amsterdam in Harlem. It's a, a little okay. city outside of Amsterdam. And everyone saw it. And we were like, okay, this must be in the, in the news tomorrow. But it, it's not. And we were like, that's, it's impossible because we all saw it. Anyway, I want to thank you so much for this wonderful conversation. Thank you. You, um, you mentioned the CE5 app and people know how to download it and where to download it. If they want to follow you online, what can they do? Well, I'm uh, uh, at Dr. Stephen Greer on Twitter and also Facebook, and I have a YouTube channel, um, youtube.com slash Dr. Stephen Greer 55. And then uh, we have a website if you need to contact us, uh, seriousdisclosure.com, S-I-R-I-U-S, disclosure.com. Serious like the star. Um, uh, and so seriousdisclosure.com is where people can go to see a whole lot of information, links to all the sites, um, links to all the military witnesses, testimony, documents. Um, and also, uh, if someone is a military government person who wants to reach out to us, or someone who has technology they want us to examine, uh, they can contact us there. And we also have the crowd, by the way, all these documentaries are being crowdfunded which means that people just donate to it. And we still have that ce5film.com is the crowdfunding site and people can still contribute because getting the word out for the documentary, the distributor does not pay for that. So we're having to raise the money and do all of that to get the word out so people can help with that. And then you get certain gifts. Um, so it's ce5film.com and anyone that, who can help us, we very much appreciate it. Yeah, I, I want everyone to see that film, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, especially that one, because it's a very practical film. And I think it's very much needed in these times to establish that connection uh, with, with the ETs. Uh, so, um, I, I, you know, I will, I will share it with everyone. Thank you. Um, and um, it was a privilege and an honor to speak with you. And I really enjoyed our conversation. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Have a good day. Have a good day. Bye-bye.